Hi, this is Christy Matthews, ChristyMatthewsOnline.com. I hope you're having a great day. And yes, if you were with me just a few minutes ago, I got this thing turned around. So just kidding. Hope you're having a great day. So the topic today is what's the difference between a Facebook profile, a Facebook page, and groups? So without further ado, now I have some lights on here, so I'm going to turn them off so that they're not reflecting against the whiteboard. So let me go ahead and do that. And there we go. I hope that that's just a little bit better. You're going to get a little light off of my computer screen here, but I think we'll get the point across. Okay. So the difference between Facebook pages, groups, and profiles is that they all overlap. They have three different functions and each has their own purpose. Now, the profile starts with the description of who you are. It will allow you to, and you should fill these things out, uh, where you reside, give a city and a state. You don't have to give your address specifically, but the more information you can give, the more insight the people who want to follow you will have about you. Put in your interest. It gives, it gives you an opportunity to put in job history, if you're self-employed, that type of thing. A profile represents a single user, one person. You can add and message your friends. Most people on Facebook understand this feature, and this is primarily the the page that they use the most. Within the profile is the timeline, and the timeline is where your news feed is. So when you get on Facebook, when you, you go ahead and you click home, that's your news feed. When you click your name, you, you'll go right over to the profile, and that has all that other information there. So the timeline, like I said, is within the profile. It allows profile users to view their own post, to view posts of their friends, and stories that they're tagged in. So if you ever been tagged to see your name highlighted in a story that may come across your newsfeed, it's because you were tagged in it. And then you can only have one profile. So I guess you could have more than one profile because they're set up by email addresses, but Facebook only wants you to have one profile. Now, a page is different. A page is like a timeline for businesses and organizations, brands and public figures, that type of, of setup, okay? And these are where people are doing something other than just for fun type of things. They're trying to promote a business, a brand or their organization. It's similar to profiles in that the owner can post uh, stories and images and that type of thing, but they can host events on their page. Uh, those who like the page, whereas on the profile, you're going to request friendships, and you can have 5,000 friends on the profile page, and once you're beyond 5,000 friends, then you can only follow. On the page, it is based on likes, and it's unlimited amount of likes. Now, those who like the page will see page updates within the newsfeed. So if you are somebody just using a profile, for instance, and you liked, let's say, a page on soccer, then any updates that come on that page that you liked will come into your newsfeed. Now, you can have multiple pages. And many people who have uh, who are involved in different things, maybe network marketing organizations, affiliate marketing, they're in organizations, they have multiple pages that they manage. Now, you must have a page to be able to do any kind of paid advertising if you want to promote those pages and uh, promote them on Facebook, boost those pages. You probably have seen the opportunity to boost a post. That's where this can happen, only on a page. It has features that groups and profiles don't. And those features are that you can manage notifications. 
you can schedule posts in advance, which is a very cool feature because remember, this is running like a business and businesses don't want you, well, it's not a good use of time to be really posting all day on Facebook. There's much more efficient way to get relevant content on the Facebook page and do it at a scheduled time and have them come out and drip over a, a scheduled period of time throughout the week, for instance, throughout the month, however long you decide to schedule these things out for. Another cool feature is the Insights feature. Insights allows you to uh, track how posts are performing, um, what people are saying, uh, how, the type of people that are engaging with you. What posts are people talking or commenting on or liking the most of? And it will give you demographic information like who is looking at those posts and what time of the day. Are they men, women? Uh, what type of interest do they have? Facebook collects all of that information and it's very insightful when you're trying to build a brand and you're doing that within the page and you're using the insights feature. The last part is groups. Now groups are used by people that have similar interests. Uh, one of the common things that you'll see is within the network marketing environment uh, or health and wellness groups, for instance, that they set up a group just for that organization. And the reason is, is that they're talking about that organization's specific topics, topics related just to that wouldn't be of interest to anybody outside of the organization, nor would it be appropriate to share those things outside of the organization. Now, their groups are used by families, peers, coworkers, teammates, that type of thing. Now, what many people do, especially in the business environment, they'll set up groups for their specific customers or people who are maybe following a public figure on a page and that public figure may have some specialized training, that type of thing that they offer within a group environment. And so you won't see really what's going on in the groups within your news feed or on a, on a page. Now, groups have three different privacy options. One is the public option, which means it's open to everybody. The second is a closed option, which means you have to ask permission to join. And the last is a secret group, which means you have to be invited to join. And that's usually what you're going to see when you're with an organization. They'll keep it as a secret group and you'll be invited in because you've been uh, verified that you're a member of that organization. When you're asking permission to get into a group, into a closed group, generally there's some questions there, maybe two or three questions within uh, the, once you get onto the group and you ask permission to join, it will ask a couple of questions of you and if based on your answers, you'll be granted permission to join or not. So that is just a basic breakdown between the three different types of pages. And on future videos, I will go into more specifics on how to set up each and every one of these pages. So I hope that this helped you out. I'll see you next time and you have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye now.